Hello everybody, Uncle Gene here. Auntie Lou's kind of tied up. We got a couple new baby goats and she's playing nursemaid and auntie and mother and whatever. My two minions, I'm not real sure where they are right now. I think they're out buying new computer parts and things for what they do. So the technical issues on this video might just be all screwed up because I'm in charge. This little video is, we're gonna to try to keep it short. It's the house build down here. I'm not gonna go into long details and all the stuff about building a house. I'm just gonna cover what we did shortly. If you have any questions, post it down in the comments and I'll try to answer you best I can. Basically, we had a lot, she had a lot, odd shape and we didn't have road access, so we ended up with the owners, we bought an additional weird triangle so that we would have 30 foot frontage to the road. It's common in the Philippines to get a lot and not actually have access to it. So they just say, oh, just go ahead and cut through our lot there to get to yours. You might have legal problems down the line. So we got the lot, um, got started, uh, let's see, our house, wanted to give you some numbers on it because everybody always asks. The house itself is uh, 125 square meters. That comes out 1,344 square feet. Now we built a workshop, my uh, man cave, they call it. You can see behind me my train board, all my hobby stuff's out here. It's 31 square meters, which is 336 square feet. Total of 1,680 square feet, 156 square meters. Cost on building, I, we're not gonna be a good comparison because the whole roof covers the house, the shop, a huge carport. We can almost fit six cars under it, but the way things work in the Philippines, everybody likes to sit outside, have cookouts, parties, and with the hot sun or a lot of rain, it's nice to have a covered patio. So we just incorporated it all under one big roof and I can't even tell you the size of it. The back patio has a 10 foot covered terrace, the entire 48 feet of the house, the front porch, has a four foot terrace on it down the side of the shop. It's got six foot even on one side, four foot on the other. So the roof coverage is much larger. Um, everything is a steel construction. We didn't use any wood in the roof at all. We wanted it to last. So the only tips I would give anybody building a house here, when you build the roof, it, it's pennies on the dollar. It's, you use double foiled or double sided insulation. It's only an inch thick. It's the only insulation you can get here. But you put that on all your rafter work before you put that metal roof down. It makes a world of difference. Uh, it makes it quieter and definitely helps with the heat issues here. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, I'll get into it a little bit, show you in the video. Hollow block is what everybody uses here. Um, cement blocks, what we call it back in America. It's a standard. It's four inches thick, six by 18, no, eight by 16. <laughs> and commercial buildings have eight inch and 10 inch blocks. But the way they're made here is a little different, and you'll see that in the video. So stick with it, watch it through. You just get a quick glimpse of the whole process. We are not quite finished with the house. Um, the soffits or ceiling panels on the outside, we still have some seam work to seal up and paint, but our carpenter, that, that's his specialty had some stuff come up with his family. He had to go back home to Davao and help them out. And hopefully he'll be here 
next month. We're, we're fingers crossed. But otherwise, we're pretty much done with everything. Once he finishes the ceiling, everything gets one final coat of paint and it's all done. So let's get on to the video. And like I said, do you have any questions? Oh, one more thing I wanted to tell you. People ask about the size of the lot. 6,800 square meters. That comes out about 1.7 acres. A small part of that down the side is about a 40 foot deep ditch. So not real usable for anything except the goats. The goats love it. They run up and down that ditch line and climb up and down. So, but that's the size of our lot. Uh, pomelo trees, coconut trees, I think we have two cacao trees and we're looking at planting some mango, some other stuff. We just hadn't decided yet. We're still landscaping and trying to fit in and settle down and take a little rest. All right, let's get on with this video. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down there and I'll get back with you. Thanks a lot. All right, here's that crazy shaped lot we have. And the blue line I drew there shows kind of that little triangle piece that we bought extra that gave us a 30-foot road front. Here's the artist's rendition of what our drawing is supposed to end up looking like when it's built. Now, this is our front yard. Uh, you can see here this is our pomelo trees, and they're right now they're just loaded with pomelos. We only have 13 trees in front, but it still produces uh, two, two or 300 pounds of pomelo. And all around us are pomelo orchards for miles, as far as you can see. And they harvest about twice a year. Now this is the big ditch that runs along the side of our property. It's about 40 feet deep and it, uh, there's not much rain goes through there. It, I guess just through the years, it finally wore down that much. Gives you an idea though of how big coconut trees grow. In fact, when I fly my drone, I have to go up to about 90 feet to clear the trees. There's one of our chickens, two of our babies. But this ditch will run the, all the way down the side of our property and kind of back there in that center is about the back of our property. Right in there. But the goats sure do like it. They go up and down that a bunch. Now we had to cut down, I think, four or five pomelo trees. The root system is a nightmare. It took this excavator two days to dig up those trees. What a mess. Now the coconut trees that we cut down were much easier. Of course, again, their stumps are horrible to get out, but they rot pretty fast. But we had a guy that he cut the logs up freehand into usable lumber. And that's what we use for scaffolding and bracing in construction. Now this is the very back fence we're putting in some columns there. We only went like four block high on the back and then four feet of chain link. Down the north side, we run a full seven foot tall block wall. And you can see where it's formed that they poured the pier columns in the middle to strengthen it all. Now this is me spreading coins in the footing. This is a Philippine tradition. We throw some pesos in every pier and all along the footing. Uh, I, I never could understand fully the blessings for the house, financial success for the house, well-being, I don't know. It just is a tradition. But they didn't say how much money to put in, so I just used one peso. <laughs> and so... If the gods were using a calculator, I shortchanged short them uh, quite a bit. But anyway, that's just a tradition in the Philippines. There's the footing we poured for the start the hollow block on the fence. I 
And this is local store where we buy our cement. You see the guy bringing it out on his head. Uh, hand dug pier hole. And here we've started on the workshop. I have a container coming. And so we're trying to hurry up and get this shop built and weathered in in case that container came early. Now this is how they pour the concrete. It's a bucket line and it's one bucket at a time of cement, back and forth. Now we bought a mixer to speed things up, but this is just how it's done. No cement trucks, no pump trucks. It's all done by hand, bucket at a time. Now here we're having a group meeting. I don't know what about, but they're having a group meeting. Oh, they got caught posing for the picture. Hi boss, get back to work. Here we've got a pig. They're on their way to getting it ready. Again, moving the cement bag at a time. Now, one of the workers had a birthday and he had never had a birthday party. So we took that pig and they prepared it and we had a roasted pig, they call it leech on here. And we put on a good feed for them, all kinds of just good food. Took them to a resort here nearby and just had a day of R&R. &R. And back to work on the shop, getting the finished coating on the outside edge of it while they're pouring the floor. Just a great bunch of guys. We had a lot of fun working. And here we've started the house construction. You can see all the coconut lumber that we cut up. We used it for scaffolding and framing and bracing and they're starting to put the steel rafters in. This is how they put the one inch layer of cement on the hollow block walls. Now the, the walls start out all steel reinforced vertical and horizontal every two other block and then they're all filled with cement so it's a solid concrete wall when they're done. Now this, this is some hollow block we bought locally. The mix ratio is one bag of cement for 120 blocks. And you can see how easy it just crumbles up. So we found if we hired our own block maker, put him on site, and we built at a ratio of one bag to 80 blocks. Much stronger block. And it ended up saving us three pesos per block. And considering we use close to 4,000 block, it did save us quite a bit of money. Now there's the scaffolding and bracing at its best. Steel roof construction, two before steel tubing, all galvanized, and every joint is welded and braced. So it's a strong roof. But it was hot up there. They, them old poor guys were just burning up. I hear they're preparing the... Uh, back terrace for cement and you can see the whole length of that thing it's all the way down to the shop and then turns and comes along the shop side we love our patio and in the philippines they don't pour the concrete slab and then build the wall they build all the walls and then they clean and break up the ground level by eyesight, and then they pour cement uh, by hand, by bucket. It's hard to get it level, though. We've had a little trouble in one of our bathrooms with water running the wrong way. The neighborhood dog, he had no problem finding wet concrete, I think, three times. We had to go back and patch up his footprints where he cut through the house. But that's <laughs> my two knuckleheads. <laughs> We had visitors. Uh, this is a, can't remember if it's called a yellow cobra or a gold cobra. Common in the Philippines. They are poisonous. There's a 10 inch centipede that we found crawling out of the wood pile. And I don't know why he's got it in his arm because they're also poisonous. Now this is how they get that one inch layer of cement on the wall. So you're in string lines about an inch out and all, all by hand, all by eyesight. And you can see how they 
get to the corner, they'll turn the corner, come all the way around the wall. And when that's a finished wall right there, and it's just as flat, level, and smooth, all our ceilings, quarter inch plywood. Now, cement in the Philippines, they mix it by hand in a trough like that. Uh, we bought a mixer to speed it up, and I figured we saved about three months' time by having that mixer. But that's how cement's mixed in the Philippines. One bucket at a time. Getting some painting done. Here the guys are taking a break. We finally got the roof over the shop and carport, gave them some shade. They'll be putting the insulation on that roof and starting on that sheet metal next. As you can see, the area that roof covers is quite a bit bigger than the house. Vertical windows, not common in the Philippines. There's my head carpenter, Brian. Painting the cabinets, built the cabinets. His dad helped build the cabinets. He does the tile work, did all our tile work. Uh, he just does everything. Be glad when he comes back. We did get moved in before Christmas. So we threw a little Christmas party for the guys. Bought them all gifts for being the workers they were and helping us out. Some of them brought their kids, and we made sure the kids had gifts. There's Papa, his extra gift. Can't guess what's in that round package. Hmm. Lots of fellowship, lots of fun people. We put on a good dinner, had a good food for everybody. All the guys at City Hardware showed up a little later. Karaoke is more popular than television here. Uh, you just, it, it's a weekly deal. If you don't have a karaoke party, there's something wrong with you. But they love it. And they, Filipinos can sing. Now here we are. This is current day. This is our backyard. We've got the Bermuda grass and carabao grass all planted. Filled in. Got the fence up. So the goats won't get in the backyard and eat mama's flowers. You can see where Lou's been potting her desert rose and everything else. Had uh, one of the carpenters built us a, oh, just a, like a post shed thing, a framework. And we covered it in shade cloth. And that's where Lou's got all her orchids growing and some of her tropical shade plants. Can't be out in the sun. See, we got some bamboo planted there. Just takes time to get it all planted and grow. That terrace is in full shade about 11 a.m. in the morning. So rest of the day, evening, that's where we hang out. Now here's the <clears throat> north end. You can see we haven't finished painting up there at the top yet. And uh, see where the soffit plywood, we still got to finish it up. But that's all we like, just getting that plywood finished up, getting the Final coat of paint on everything. Now here in the Philippines, they they just don't have central air conditioning systems. Um, so we have a window unit in that bedroom, and then we have split system in the living room and in our bedroom. But that pretty much cools that whole house just fine. And there's that big old carport. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. Please head back to like and subscribe and the bell. See you next time.